Baleen whales are giant mammals which use keratinaceous baleen plates in their mouths to sieve planktonic creatures from the water. They split from toothed whales around 30 million years ago. That's in this period that appeared animals like Jangacetus, an animal with large eyes and jaws full of sharp teeth that may have been an active hunter. But despite sounding like it should be some sort of proto-orca, it wasn't even an odontocete. This was actually a baleen whale, albeit a member of an odd group that split off before the development of baleen and kept their teeth. It had wide blunt snouts and very large mouths for their size, suggesting they were specialized for suction feeding, using water pressure to draw prey straight into their waiting jaws. Etiocetus is an important transitional form as it displays the early origins of the baleen whales, while still retaining teeth that can be identified as incisors, canines, and molars like many other mammals. It is unique in its representation of transition from toothed archaeocete to toothless mysticete. However, it is not a transitional form in the strictest sense, that is, it cannot be an ancestor to extant mysticeti. Hence, Whales whose feeding relied entirely on baleen made their stratigraphic appearance before Etiocetus, meaning that true baleen whales existed before Etiocetus. Borealodon was another of those toothed mysticetes. Unlike modern baleen whales it was small, about the size of a modern porpoise, and the wear on its multicusped teeth suggest it was a predator taking slicing bites of fish, possibly using suction-assisted feeding like its close relatives the Etiocetids. Its fossilized remains are also a rare example of an ancient whale fall, with characteristic bore holes in its bones from Ostax worms. Mayabalina had no teeth at all, but possibly also no baleen. Baleen rarely fossilizes, so it's unclear whether it actually had any or not, but the shape of its skull suggests it probably didn't, it lacked the broad thickened upper jaw associated with supporting racks of baleen plates. It instead seems to have been adapted for suction feeding similar to modern belugas and beaked whales, using muscular cheeks and tongue to manipulate water pressure and pull small prey like fish and squid straight into its mouth. Since it lived at a time when the Antarctic circumpolar current was forming and cooling the oceans, changing ecosystems and prey availability, it may represent a previously unknown stage in baleen whale evolution, a point when they'd moved toward specializing for suction feeding and lost their teeth entirely. Living about 27 to 23 million years ago, the 7 meters long Eomysticetus was one of the first completely toothless mysticetes. It had only baleen plates in its mouth, but other features of its anatomy were still somewhat primitive. Its blowhole was partway down its snout, its vertebrae and forelimbs were quite similar to those of its basilosaurid ancestors, and it relied on extremely powerful jaw muscles to close its mouth rather than the specialized energy-saving elastic ligaments seen in more modern baleen whales. Waharoa had an unusually long flattened snout, with its nostrils further forward than modern whales, and only had baleen in the back half of its mouth, an interesting comparison to the intermixed teeth and baleen of some other early mysticetes. It's not clear whether it had any vestigial teeth in the front of its jaws, although a single possible tooth has been found associated with its close relative Tokarahia. The rather delicate nature of Waharoa's jawbones suggests it wasn't capable of rapid lunges at swarms of its small prey, instead probably using slow-cruising surface skim feeding similar to modern right whales. Eobalianoptera was the earliest known true member of the Balianopteroidea. In both size and skeletal anatomy, it was very similar to the modern mink whale, and may have occupied a similar ecological niche. And, while it was much larger than the more archaic cetotheres, it still had to share the ocean with the same sorts of super predators, and would have still been vulnerable to predation from the largest of them.
Right whales' principal distinguishing feature is their narrow, arched, upper jaw, which gives the animals a deeply curved jawline. This shape allows for especially long baleen plates. The animals utilize these by ram feeding, swimming at or near the surface with their mouth open for minutes at a time, and straining food from the water, which they then scrape off the baleen with their tongues, a feeding method that contrasts with those of the rorquals. Bowhead whales have the largest mouth of any animal representing almost one-third of the length of the body, the longest baleen plates with a maximum length of 4 meters and may be the longest lived mammals, with the ability to reach an age of more than 200 years. This species has been hunted for blubber, meat, oil, bones and baleen. Like other right whales, it swims slowly, and floats after death, making it ideal for whaling. Southern right whales are rather active on the water surface and curious towards human vessels. They appear to be more active and tend to interact with humans more than the other two northern species. One behavior unique to the southern right whale, known as tail sailing, is that of using their elevated flukes to catch the wind, remaining in the same position for a considerable amount of time. They feed almost exclusively on zooplankton, particularly krill. They feed just beneath the water's surface, holding their mouths partly open and skimming water continuously while swimming. Because of their docile nature, their slow surface skimming feeding behaviors, their tendencies to stay close to the coast, and their high blubber content, North Atlantic right whales were once a preferred target for whalers. At present, they are among the most endangered whales in the world, there are fewer than 370 individuals in existence. They seem less active compared to subspecies in Southern Hemisphere. However, this could be due to intense difference in number of surviving individuals especially calves that tend to be more curious and playful than adults, and small amount of observations. Right whales in the Southern Hemisphere and the North Atlantic make a variety of vocalizations that have been researched extensively in the last decade. Because the numbers of right whales in the North Pacific are so small, and the whales are located in more remote areas, the study of North Pacific right whale vocalizations has had more challenges and there are fewer recordings. All of the sounds recorded for North Pacific right whales have been recorded on the northern portion of their range. These calls are all low-frequency sounds that appear to have social communication functions, but what exactly those functions are is not yet known. There is no evidence that right whale sounds are used for echolocation as is seen in dolphins and toothed whales. First appearing around 20 million years ago, the cetotheres were a widespread family of fairly small baleen whales, generally no larger than 5 meters long. The genus Cetotherium itself was long considered a wastebasket taxon, used for any fossils mysticetes that didn't fit anywhere else, and once contained at least 12 different species. Due to their relatively small size, cetotheres would have been vulnerable to various big predators, including killer sperm whales and megalodon. This heavy predation pressure may have helped push the evolution of increased body size in later baleen whales, since larger animals tend to have fewer natural predators. Suciulia is a dwarf cetotheriid, 3 to 4 meters in length. It differs from the other cetotheridae in the presence of a narrow occipital shield, which is as long as wide, and a pars cochlearis of the periodic bone bulging out ventral to fenestra rotunda. Primitive characters include the premaxillae forming a transverse line with the posterior ends of nasals and maxillae rather than constricted or overridden by ascending processes of maxillae. Gray whales are renowned for their remarkable annual migration, which is one of the longest of any mammal. They travel up to 16,000 to 20,000 kilometers round trip between their feeding grounds in the Bering and Chukchi Seas and their breeding and calving lagoons in Baja California, in Mexico. They are bottom feeders, 
and their feeding habits involve sucking in sediment from the ocean floor and filtering it through their baleen plates to capture small crustaceans. This behavior often results in distinctive mud patches on their backs. The unique structure of their baleen plates, which is coarser and more robust than that of other baleen whales, is believed to be an adaptation to their benthic feeding habits. These whales have a mottled gray coloration and a characteristic series of knuckles along their back, rather than a dorsal fin. They also possess a few patches of white mottling caused by parasitic whale lice. They are known for their inquisitive nature, occasionally approaching boats and human divers. Humpback whales are famous for their acrobatic behaviors, which include breaching and slapping their flippers and tails on the surface. These behaviors are believed to serve various purposes, including communication, play and possibly removing parasites. Males produce complex and lengthy songs, which are among the most sophisticated in the animal kingdom. These haunting songs can last up to 20 minutes and are believed to be associated with mating rituals and establishing dominance among males. The purpose of the songs is still not completely understood, but they likely play a role in breeding and communication. Like other rorquals, humpback whales are filter feeders. They use baleen plates to filter small fish, krill, and other prey from the water. They are known for their unique feeding technique called bubble net feeding, in which groups of whales create a net of bubbles to corral and concentrate their prey before lunging through the bubble net with their mouths open. They are known to be highly intelligent and social creatures, often exhibiting nurturing behaviors toward their young and other members of their pod. The fin whale is the second largest animal species on the planet, following the blue whale. It can grow up to 27 meters in length and weigh up to 80 tons, making it an awe-inspiring presence in the ocean. They have a sleek and streamlined body shape, featuring asymmetrical coloring with a white or light-colored lower jaw and underside and a dark gray or black upper body. This unique coloration helps with camouflage and blending into their surroundings. Despite their large size, they are incredibly agile and fast swimmers, reaching speeds of up to 40 km per hour in short bursts. This speed is beneficial for both evading predators and capturing prey. Reaching a maximum confirmed length of 33 meters and weighing up to 200 tons, the blue whale is the largest animal known ever to have existed. It is usually solitary, but can be found in pairs. When productivity is high enough, blue whales can be seen in gatherings of more than 50 individuals. Populations may go on long migrations, traveling to their summer feeding grounds towards the poles and then heading to their winter breeding grounds in more equatorial waters. The animals appear to use memory to locate the best feeding areas. Blue whales were initially difficult to hunt because of their size and speed. This began to change in the mid-19th century with the development of harpoons that can be shot as projectiles. Blue whale whaling peaked between 1930 and 1931 with 30,000 animals taken. Today, increasing man-made underwater noise impacts blue whales. They may be exposed to noise from commercial shipping and seismic surveys as a part of oil and gas exploration. Say whale inhabits most oceans and adjoining seas, and prefers deep offshore waters. It migrates annually from cool, subpolar waters in summer to temperate, subtropical waters in winter with a lifespan of 70 years. Its diet consists primarily of copepods, krill and other zooplankton. It is among the fastest of all cetaceans, and can reach speeds of up to 50 km per hour over short distances. Following large-scale commercial whaling during the late 90th and 20th centuries, when over 255,000 whales were killed, the say whale is now internationally protected. Common mink whale is the smallest species of the rorquals. 
Although first ignored by whalers due to its small size and low oil yield, it began to be exploited by various countries beginning in the early 90th century. As other species declined larger numbers of common mink whales were caught, largely for their meat. It is now one of the primary targets of the whaling industry. Mink whales are known for their relatively frequent and unpredictable surfacing patterns, which can make them challenging to observe. They typically have a series of short dives followed by brief periods at the surface for breathing. They are generally more solitary and less gregarious compared to some other whale species, which can make them challenging to study in the wild. Bride's whales regularly dive for about 5 to 15 minutes after 4 to 7 blows. They are capable of reaching depths down to 300 meters when submerging, these whales do not display their flukes. While the vocalizations of bride's whales are not as well documented as those of some other whale species, they are known to produce a variety of sounds, including clicks, moans and groans, which are likely used for communication and echolocation. The major threats faced by these whales primarily include human activities with ship strikes and entanglement in fishing gear, which can result in injury or death, habitat degradation and pollution, that pose significant risks to health, climate change-induced impacts such as ocean acidification and shifts in prey availability can further exacerbate the challenges faced by these whales. Human-generated ocean noise, particularly from activities such as shipping, military sonar and offshore construction, can significantly disrupt the underwater acoustic environment and pose a substantial threat to whales' communication and behavior. This noise pollution can interfere with the ability of whales to effectively communicate, navigate and locate prey, leading to potential disorientation, increased stress levels and difficulty in finding food. The cumulative impact of prolonged exposure to these anthropogenic sounds can have detrimental effects on the overall health and well-being of whale populations, highlighting the urgent need for review our way of invading the marine environment.